There we go. Beautiful. Can I just ask another question, Peter? Go ahead. Before you start, when you when you record, is is all you do is you just press the record command? Yeah, and it'll ask you whether you want to record online on the cloud or on your computer. Um, okay. So Zoom actually lets you record onto their site, but the amount of storage that you get is minimal. So basically enough for one session and that's it. Um, and then they charge you and it's reasonably expensive to store stuff on theirs. So it's a lot cheaper just to record onto your computer, then upload it to YouTube, which is free. And then you don't have to be paying Zoom to, to store you, okay. your videos. Okay. Yep. I might I might call you later about about how to do that. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get started. So, any questions from anything we've looked at previously? Oops. Good. Okay. That's what I like to hear, or not hear, as the case. <laughs> yeah, I have actually. Oh, uh, there's always Sorry. one. Sorry. Yeah. Um, go ahead. There's always one. That, that'd be questions. I understand. Now. Um, if I've got it in the head the right way, a chord is made up from the three notes, right? The one, three, five, uh -huh. sometimes seven, uh -huh. I don't know. And the reason we pick a key is so that when we start to sing, we know the three notes basically that the chord is made up from. Yeah, kind of. Oh, all right. Um, so chords are not necessarily just three notes. Basic chords, yeah. you know, a basic chord like a C major chord is going to be C, E, G. Yeah. Um, but there are lots of other options. So uh, um, a chord that we do a lot of in barbershop is a seventh chord, which might be yeah. C, E, G, B, if it was a C7 chord. Um, but there's lots of other notes. So you might have yeah. a an ordinary chord, which is C, E, G, but they'll decide to add in the fourth or the sixth. Yep, and that gives it a different sound. Correct, yeah. Yep. But the basic chord and the basic framework is, is going to be around a major key usually in our, in barbershop anyway. So, All right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's right, that's correct. That's to make the, the song singable for the range of voice that people have. All right, so you choose the key to match the ability of your singers. Yeah, so, say, yes, we'll sing this, we'll sing this upper semi. And that's right, yeah. So you, your arranger, for example, if, if the arranger's writing a song for men, barbershop, he might put it in the key of C. But if he's writing it for women, he might put it in the key of G. Same, same notes, okay. but they'll just raise it maybe a fifth. Commonly, women's arrangements are about a fifth higher than men's arrangements. That's not right. a rule, that's just typically what happens yeah. um so yeah so we and and then sometimes as you know we get into rehearsal and and the director will say oh the basses can't sing that low note very well so let's go up a semitone or up a tone or down a third or whatever it is depending on on what we want to achieve yeah. um so yeah so you pick a key that works for the, the ensemble as a whole and it doesn't have to be the key that the the arranger chose yeah, righto. All right, it's becoming clearer. Good. Thank you. All right, so I have um, I have three pieces of music here that people have emailed to me. So let's have a look at those for starters. Okay, so you should have Irish Blessing up right now. Is that correct? Yes. 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 All right, let me just blow it up a bit. Oops, not quite that much. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's, uh, for starters, uh, what's the key signature for this song? C, but not because of the C that's there. So that's correct. It is C major, but the reason we know it's C major is because there's no sharps or flats. Mm -hmm. what, what's the other option for no sharps or flats? What other key might it be? Oh, I have a cheat sheet. <laughs> That's fine. Cheat sheets are good. <laughs> so, minor. No, so we a remember minor. A minor is correct. So remember we go down a third. So C, oh. go down a third, brings us to A. So it's always the same. So if we have uh, G, maybe the key is G major, 
What's a third below G? E. 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 Yeah, so the relative minor to E major is G, uh, sorry, the relative minor to G major is E minor. And so you can always go down a third and that will give you the relative <coughs> minor key. That's, that's the same all the way through. There's no exceptions to that. All right, so we're in C major. What does the C stand for then? Common time. Common time. Common time, which is? Four, four. Four, four, crotchet, beats. four crotchet beats to a bar. Good. Okay, so let's look at the first bar. Have we got four crotchet beats? <coughs> yeah, so this is a pickup bar. So when we want to determine the key, are we really that interested in the first little half bar? No, 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 generally not. Um, so typically, I haven't even looked at this one yet, but typically if there's like two notes before, that the chord would most commonly be the fifth of the key. And this one, so if we're in C major, what's the fifth going to be? G. G. So what's the very first chord? E. Uh, e. 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 B. G and C. A, F, C, E, G, G. It's C, E, G, isn't it? G. Which is actually the, the root C in this case. C major chord. Yeah, it's a C major chord. Um, notice in this one, which is not so common, um, which note is doubled? The tenor and bass. Is it? Which note? So we've got two two parts singing the same note. Oh, oh sorry. Oh. Yeah. C. What? Which which two parts are singing the same note? Um, On the word road. On May. Oh, you said oh. ignore the first bar. We're talking about road. Tenor and the bass. Good boy. Sorry, I didn't make that clear. I was talking about the May chord to begin with. Oh, okay. okay, so May, we've got the two... Bass two, and baritone. Bass and baritone singing the G. Yeah. yeah, yeah um, okay. All right, so we're in C major, all right? There's not, no question about that. It's not an iffy one whether, where we think <coughs> maybe we're in the minor key. Um, although there are a few accidentals coming along. Um, but they're not really um, they're not really changing the key in this case. We won't go into how that works for, for this point at this point in time. All right. Um, well, did you, Peter? Did you take that first the May chord as indicative of, as, that it um, supported the, the that it was in the key of C? Yes. What is the May chord? The road chord is C major and it's straight C major. There's no yeah. if, iffy stuff about there. What's the what's the chord on May? Um, e, e, B, B, E in the tenor and G in the barry and The C on the bass. Is that right? No. So the bass is G. G on the bass. The, the barrier is G. Yeah. The the tenor is B. So it's G B. And then we've got an E, which is not really part of the chord. But you notice it's moving through. We've got if you look at the lead line, we've got E F G on May the Road. Yeah. So that the actual chord happens on the. So what's the chord on the? F, um, G, D, E, D, G, D, F, B, 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 G, F, B, B, G, D, F, which is G, B, D, F. And what, what chord is that? So let's take off the F. G, B, D, what chord is that? It's G, B, it's C a D. major. C major. G major. 
G major. Oh, G major. Yeah. Yeah. So G B D is G major. Yep. What is G major in the key of C? What number? Fifth. It's a fifth. Yeah. So remember, I said that often, if there's a little pickup measure, the chord in that pickup measure will be the fifth. So here we have the fifth G major, but with an added F, which makes it a G seven. F is the seventh from G, so G, B, D, F. So we've got on the first chord on May, it's kind of not really G, B, D, E, which is E is the fourth. So that's kind of just a weird little chord that doesn't match much. But then the main chord on the is a G7. And then that leads us to C, which is the chord right. of the key. And that's the first real chord of the song. First real chord is on road, which is C major. C major. So, so look out for five ones. You, they're, they're really common. You'll see them all over the place. Um, basically, if you pay five one in any key, you are in that key. Sometimes composers use that when they want to change key. They'll play five one in the new key, and then you just continue on in the new key. So by playing 5-1, you set the key. That didn't mean anything to me, Peter. What, what does, <coughs> okay. when you see 5-1, what is it? So let's go back a bit then. So what we have here on Mather is the chord 5. And on Road is 1. 5-1 as a combination sets the key. And so sometimes later on in a song, you know how we change key often in barbershop arrangements? The easiest way to change key, if you're going to arrange a song, is to play 5-1 in the new key. Let's say we want to go to B major. We would play 5-1 in B major, and that sets the key for B major, and then away we go in B major. And it sounds right, and there's no problem. So the easiest way to, to, to make everyone aware of what the key is, is you play 5-1 in that key. Right. That's and why... That is the fifth above the one or the fifth below the one? Always above. Never count backwards when, you, when you're working with numbers in a, in a key. So yes, it's five, one, G, G7 to C major. That sets us in the key of C major. Okay. Clear on that? No. no. Okay. That's what they call a chord progression, isn't it? It is a chord progression from chord five to chord one. Um, okay. So on that, on that, um, the chord for road, um, <coughs> that, that's a C, isn't it? The road yeah. is C. Let me start drawing some stuff. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So this is chord five. Whoops. Usually when you type chord numbers, by the way, we use Roman numerals. It's just the convention. And then we go to one. It's actually five, seven, if we want to be absolutely correct. So five, seven on Mather and one on road. So the point I'm making is that when you see five to one, you will normally be in the key of one, whatever the one is. Okay, so let me give you an example. Let's say we're talking A major. What's what's five in A major? Mm -hmm. A, B, C, D, E. Oh. Yeah, so just count up. A, B, C, D, E, that's five in A major. So if we were to play <coughs> E major, which is called five, followed by A major, which is chord one. To our ear, that just sets us in the key of A major. You play five, one, everybody knows. Sorry, we don't know. We, we can't necessarily put a, a, a letter to it, but when we hear that, it sets us in that key. I wish I had a piano keyboard here and I'd play it for you. You can kind of hear it. Um, I might um, I might make up some little um, 
some little audio clips for next week. It, it'll make it clearer. Um, Peter, on that um, on that road cord, <clears throat> the center line is um, C. The tenor singing C on road, yes. C, and the lead is on um, B. B. G. G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the Barry is G. on um, Barry's on, oh no, Barry's on E. E is correct. And then the bass must be on A. No. Try again. Oh, one up. Sorry. Uh, he's on C. Bass is on C. Correct. Okay. So we've got C, E, G, C. Which is C major with the, the octave, tenor singing the octave above the bass. Uh, and that's it. Okay, so but the uh, the root of the okay. What's the root of the chord? B. E. No. G C. Charlie. No. Is it not C? It's C. It's the C major chord. So if it's a C major chord, the root is C always. If it's an E major chord, the root is E. Well, how do you get it to describe the root as C when the root should be the third note, shouldn't it? No, the root is the first note. Oh, the root is the first note. Yeah. Right. The root, the root is one. Yeah. Okay. Now I understand. Right. So the, the word tonic, the word root, number one, all mean the same thing. So, and then E is three and G is five. Correct. Ah, okay. A little light bulb just Light went bulb. On. Well done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have, a, we have a C major chord there. Um, now, what were we discussing before that? Was it anything important? Do we need to go over anything more? on that five to one progression. I understand that. The chord stays the same all the way through the bar, does it? No, it changes all the time. All oh, right. It may do, in some bars, it might yeah. stay the same all the way through. Now, when I used to play the guitar, you'd play C and you'd play it for that, for those bars. Yeah, and so. Changing, but the chord kind of, that you're playing would still be the same. Yeah. Um, but it, the notes change and that gives you a different chord, yes? Correct. So in barbershop particularly, we're going to have more chord changes than what you would have in a country and western song where you're singing, you know, chords that might last for a whole bar. Sometimes the chord might be the same for four bars. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very, very rare in barbershop. The only, time, the only time a chord lasts for four bars is if it's the last note and it takes four bars. To, to write out that note, usually. Um, so let's look at the first bar, road rise. What's the chord on rise? Hmm. A and C. A and C. And there's one more note there. A and C. And there's a third note, E. Yeah, so what, what chord is that? A, C, E. It's the fourth, isn't it? A, isn't it? It's the fourth of the key. It's actually an A minor chord, but you don't need to worry about that, whether it's major or minor, but it's A minor. And in this case, it's not the fourth, sorry. It's the sixth in this case of this key. Mm. If you count up from C, C, D, E, F, G, A. So it's the sixth of the key. Um, then uh, what's the chord on meat? Mm -hmm. G, B. Mm -hmm. 
C D V is GBD plus. There's another note. What's the base? What's the base note? B. B for Charlie. Yeah. So it's E G B D. What chord is that? In the key. So we're in the key of C. What's an E chord? C, D, D, E. So it's the third of the key. And the chord this on bit, me. This bit is losing me, Peter. I don't know if you can help. Um, <clears throat> we started talking about what chord is in this particular key. And I'm thinking, well, I know that <clears throat> the, the C major chord is one, three, and five. So that's C, D, E. But um, I, I, we, we're still in the we're still in the key of C, so there's no sharps or flats. But you're talking about things that we haven't ever come across before, like the other chords. Uh, yeah, so so we're we're looking at the different chords that are running through this song. So don't expect that every chord in the song is going to be C major because it's in the key of C major. That no, I, I realise that. Boring. But what we haven't got is a reference that says these these letters correspond to this key and these letters correspond to this key. So we're trying to recognize something that we haven't got a pattern, been given a pattern to recognize against. Well, the, the, we've just looked at a chord, which is E, G, B, D. So it's an E chord, right? Don't worry about whether it's major or minor for this point. It's an E chord. It starts on E, right? E, G, B, D is the chord. You're talking about the meat chord? The meat chord, yeah. Right. Okay. So the root of the chord is E and it happens to be in the bass. It won't always be, but commonly the basses will sing the root of the chord or the, the main note of the chord. Um, so, E, G, B, D. What number is that in, in C major? C is one. D hey. is two. Three is E. So, we're talking about the third chord in E major. And this one is a seventh because it's E, G, B, D. It's got, it's got the seventh note in it. How do we know that's the seventh? If E is the root, we count up seven. E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. So the seventh above E is E, G, B, D. D is the D. Okay. Sorry, could I, I'm just going to make some notes. Could you just repeat the notes in, we're looking at the, uh, the meat chord, aren't we? Yes. So the base note is what? The base note is E. Right, E, and then as you go up, the, what are the notes in that chord? E, G, B, D. Okay, so G is in the lead part. Okay, in the in the in the order from the bottom, Peter, please. So bass is E. Yes. Barry is D. Yes. Lead is G, and tenor is B. Right, <clears throat> and. Your, uh, and then what was the next mental leap, which is, which escaped me completely? You, what was the question you said? What is the, what is that chord or something? So like what, what number is what? that? What number is that in the key? So the key we're looking at is C major. That's what this song is written in. Right. So, so in that e sense, is major. E is three. D is. Don't worry uh, about D. We're only interested in the, the root of the chord, which is E. So it's an E chord. Right, which is, e three is three from yes from C. Yes. So it's the yes. third. It's the third chord in this particular key. That's all we're worried about. Ah. Right. So how do we know that E is the? So there's there's several things going on at once here. How do we know that E is the root of this chord? Um, that's a good question. So um, commonly, the bass will have the root. So that's the place to look first. But okay. what you need to do is you need to look at the chord. Um, so let's, let me find one that isn't where the bass isn't the okay. root. Okay, we didn't quite finish. So E is three, D is four, G is uh, C, D, E, F, G. G is five. Correct. Uh, and B is seven. Correct. So this chord is three four five and seven but then there was some other mental leap that i didn't get 
Uh, now you're trying to assign the numbers in the chord back to C major. That you don't do that. That's that's going to confuse you, I guarantee. So well, I'm certainly confused. Yep. Okay, that's good. So we've achieved that. Well done. Um, <laughs> but, but your so, question was. I so what we're mixing up? No, just hang really on a minute. Me. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. We're mixing up the number in the key with the number in the chord. There's two different numbers that we're looking at. So in the key of C major, one is yeah. C. Two is D, three is E, and so on. We yes. we all get that, right? Everyone yes. comfortable with that? But when we look at this chord, it happens to be the third in the key. So it starts on E. So in this chord, one is E, three is G, five is B, seven is D. So in the so E chord. Again, slowly. So E is one because this happens to be. The root of this chord is E for some reason that I don't know yet. We'll get to that in a minute. So just trust yeah. me on that. So E is yeah. the root of the chord. Yes. And so now we're looking at the numbers in the chord. And yeah. these numbers don't relate back to C major. We're just looking at these numbers in the chord of E. Right. The G chord of E, we have one, three, five, seven. E, G, B, D. So don't relate the one, three, five, seven back to the chord of C. We're just talking about within that one chord, the chord of E that we're looking at, they're the numbers within the chord. So say them again, one. We have E, one, three, G, five, B, D, which equals one, three, five, seven. Sorry, somebody talked over you. Can you say it again, please? <laughs> one. One, three, five, seven. Which equals? When you bought that printer. Okay. Did I buy ink? Yes. Ron, you uh, need to go on mute. Okay, it's all right. That's done. Okay, so let me let me scribble on the score again. Um, when I can get this back, where is it? If this is an E chord, which you've told me it is, I don't see where the three comes in. Is that because major chords are always one, three, five? So every basic chord is one, three, five. The basic right. structure of a chord is one, three, five, whether it's major or minor. Um, so. But a third up from E is not D. It's G. Here's the third. So within this chord, the lead note is the third. Um, right. Peter, if you just want to type a, um, uh, a number or a note aside a key, if you, if you use the type type text thing. I'm doing that. Can you not see it? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just as you're opening up a big text box. Can you see the, the blue writing? Yeah. One. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. So this is an E chord. We're not going to worry about major or minor. We'll just call it an E chord. Within the E chord, the back, whoops, hang on, go away. Within the E chord, the basses are singing one, the root of the chord. The Barrys are okay. singing the seventh of the chord. <clears throat> I, the think it's, I think it's falling into place now. The trick is that the D is not, is, is the D that is an octave below what would be the seventh. The, the Barrys D, if it, if it was a typical one, three, five, seven, the seven would be D above uh, whatever that note is. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter what octave the chord is in it's still that note of the chord i realize that but that's okay. the trick the fact that it doesn't matter so yes. uh, the the d could so be in the tenor the, part up an octave and it would still be the same right. so it's the seventh chord but it's not in sequence that's the trick so the yes. thing that's confusing is that the d that the barrys have is the seventh above the B that the tenors have? Yes. Well, the, the Barry note is well below the tenor note. Yes, I know, but but to be in this, uh, I mean, yes, you could you could have the same chord by putting the Barry's D up an octave, and then it would be the one three five seven progression that we're used to seeing. It's just the fact that the seventh that's 
been dropped down and up to. Yeah, so well, it's when yeah. We go one three five mixed seven. Up. We we usually pardon. It's it's a little mixed up. It's not yes. it's not yes. in in order. So we don't have yes. one one in the base and three in the barry and five and this in the This is the first time we've seen tenor. this, I think. So that's okay. the that's the so difference. Let me um So that's good learning. Let um, me go to before you lose that little bit, it's yep. still fair to say that in the key of C, that chord on meat, um, the root is E. It's a different chord. Hang on, I'm trying to open another program and it doesn't want me to. Um, can you see that finale on your screen? Is that showing up? No. No, no. good. Yeah, okay. blessing with numbers. All right, good. Okay, I want to, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to share another program with you. And we're going to talk about this very issue. So it's called uh, inversions. And it was something I wasn't going to do with you right now, but I think we need to do it to make sense of the chords that we're looking at. Okay, so you should now have music up on screen. Yeah. Okay, let me blow this one up a bit. Um, <coughs> Okay. Um, let me add some bars. What have I done? Here we go. Okay, so we are in the case of, well, hang on, look, let you tell me, what key are we in here? Four sharps. A major. E major. E major is correct. Major. Yeah, so remember the easy way to work it out yeah. is look at the last sharp and go up one. So the last sharp is D, yeah. up one is E. So we're, we're in the key of E major. But for simplicity, let's go back to C major. Whoops. Okay, so we're now in the key of C major. Now, if I, I'm just going to do three note chords for now, just to make things easy. So we'll put one note in the bass. So let's say we have C. In fact, I'm going to do chords on one staff. So if we go C, E, G. Um, so this is the chord in the order that we'd like to see it. It's the simplest way of looking at a chord. And the name of this, if you're interested, it's called root position. Then what we can do is we can put the bottom note up the top. So that is the same chord. So we've taken the C from the bottom, from the bass, and we put it up into the, the barry. So can you see that that's the same chord? It's C, yes. E, G? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but we've, we've just changed a note. The so we've moved up. it up, moved it up an octave. So this is called first inversion. Then we've got Not this really one. Not really C, G, e, C, E. Just, sorry, what did you say it was? It's C, E, G. Yes, but it's actually... Uh, it is e, C, E, G. It is C, E, G. It is not E, G, C. It is C, E, G. It is a C major chord. So you never try and work out the chord based on whatever the third is or the fifth. You always start from the root, even if the root is not the lowest note. That's a really good way to get yourself confused. Okay, so it is a C, E, G chord, even though the C is in the highest part in this particular instance. So it's called a first inversion. This one here, now we've taken what used to be the middle note, and it's now at the top. So what used to be the highest note is now the lowest note compared to the first one, but it's still the same chord. It's still C, E, G. We've just changed where the notes come. And this happens all the time. When you look through any barbershop music sheet, you're going to find chords that are all mixed up. And you know it might be mixed up like that one. So it might be this.
you might see a chord like that, for example. So the basses are singing a G, the barriers are singing the root, which is the C, the leads are on the E, which is the third, and the tenors are on the root again, which is the C. But it's still a C major chord, even though the, the notes are all over the place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that make sense? Everyone get yes. that? Yep. Yes. So just for, for words so that you know if you hear these words, this one here is root position where everything is in the right order. The second one is called the first inversion where the bottom note is the third of the chord. This one here is called the second inversion where the bottom note is the fifth of the chord. You don't really need to know those terms, but you may hear them used. And so you, you'll just know what they mean. But at the end of the day, what we need to recognize with chords is we don't really care what inversion they're in. We just need to be able to recognize what chord we're looking at, even if the root note is not the lowest note. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we just got to look at a chord and say, okay, so here's a chord. Tell mm -hmm. me, tell me what chord this is. What chord is that? G. So it's G, B, D. Yeah, so that was an easy one. Let's do something. Let's look at something else. What chord is that? We sing G. So what chord is it? A. What is it? A. Mm -hmm. So E happens to be the root note in this chord, but that doesn't mean it's an E chord. So it, this chord is in an inversion. You don't oh. need to tell me which inversion, but I need to know what chord that is. It's a C chord. Correct. It's a C major chord. Even though E is the bottom note, it is still a C major chord because it has the notes C, E, G. Mm. That's what makes it a C major chord. Mm -hmm. What about this one? Okay, work it out. So you've got some ledger lines here to contend with. <laughs> You'll see them commonly in music, especially a couple. You don't generally won't see more than a couple. It's also a C it's chord, I think. C. Correct. So it's another, it's another C major chord. In this case, the G happens to be the bottom note, but it's still a C major chord. Okay, what about this one? So what you seem to be saying, Peter, is that if you get C, E, G, it doesn't matter which octave or anything else the C and the E and the G are in, that's a C major chord. Correct. Okay. That is, that is today's surprise, I think. D, A, D. AJ. Is that a G7? Mm -hmm. Is it? C. Triple one. D. Triple one. This one's a little tricky. So someone said, it, is it a G7? You're half right. It is a seventh chord, right? But not a G7. C7. Not C7. a C7 either. <laughs> We're running out of notes. <laughs> not a G7. It's not a C7. So what must it be? Is there any other one? One other note in the chord? A. A. It's an E7. So what are the notes we've got? We've got E, e G, G, E, no B. 
There's two G's. C G E G. So we've got E G and then D. The B's missing. But it's still an E seven chord. Can you tell us where the you've mentioned the notes? Can you just say them in the order, either from the top or the bottom, whichever I don't care. Well the bass note is G. Right. And then D in the barrier. Yes. Yes. E in the lead yes. and G in the tenor. Right. So both the bass and the tenor are singing G and it's not the root of the chord. But because we've got a seventh, that kind of tells us between the E and the D, that kind of tells us that this is a seventh chord. And it would make more sense if it was in the context of a song and, and that key made that, you know, that chord made sense within whatever the, the song was doing. Okay, but that's an E7 chord. So don't always expect to see every note in the chord. Sometimes a note will be doubled and it might not always be the root. The most common note that you will see doubled is the root. So if it's an E7 chord or an E chord, the E is the most common one that you will see two parts singing. The next can you most, just, sorry. go on. I was gonna say, can you just tell us again what the, what the chord was? E7, E7. yes. We're not, we're not worried about major or minor and we're ignoring the fact that the, mm. it's not right as far as key signature is concerned. We're just looking purely at notes right now. So, so it's not actually an E7 chord, but just for anyone who knows, um, we're just looking at the basic notes. We're not worried about sharps or flats or anything like that at this point. Okay, so the, the root note is the most common note that you will find doubled, which means two parts are singing the same note. The next most common note you will see doubled is the fifth of the chord. That's what's happening in this E7 chord. The fifth is, no, sorry, it's the third that's doubled in this particular chord, uh, which mm -hmm. is not common. You won't see the, chord, the third doubled very often. It doesn't sound good when the third is doubled. So most arrangers will avoid it like the plague. Um, so so this has got two thirds and the fifth is missing, is that right? That's correct, yeah. Oh, okay, so that, that's a hard one and you probably won't see too many like that with a third doubled, but sometimes maybe. It depends on where the melody's going and how the, the arranger is, is getting all the other parts to go where they want them to go. And sometimes the only option is to leave a note out of the chord and to double something that maybe we don't really want doubled, but that's the only way that works musically for the various parts to get where they're going. All right, let's look at another one. I find this taxing and there's not even any sharps or flats and when we get into other keys, it's like going to be a nightmare. Sure. Well, when you're looking at notes on a score, there'll be a key signature, but there won't be sharps or flats attached to the actual note unless there's an accidental. Whoops. Okay, what chord have we got here? A, E, C. A, um, O, E, E, C, and G. Yay. Is it a seventh? Where's the seventh? Um, A. No. It'll be a six. A, A, and C. So we've got one note doubled. What's, what's, what's the doubled note in this chord? C. E. 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 E, e. Correct. So, what what are the three notes that we're left with? If you ignore the doubled note, what three <laughs> notes have we got? A chord. A. We got A and Charlie. C. C and E. 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 A C E. What chord? Uh, C. That's an A major chord. 
That is an A chord. You're absolutely right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So A, C, E. And in this case, the E is doubled. The fifth of the chord is doubled, which you will see reasonably commonly. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, what chord is that? The C major chord? It's a B in it, so. It's kind of, yeah, nearly. So it's C. It looks like a C7, but with a note missing. Is it? So we've got C in the Barry, oh. E in the bass, G in the tenor, and B in the lead. So that's a C7 chord, nothing's missing. C, E, G, B. Yeah. So that's a straight C7. Mm. So the hard part is oh, working right, yeah. out where the root is. Once you get the root, you, you're right. Um, so sometimes it's worth when you're getting to know this is right on a piece of paper, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then put an X where the notes are and you'll see the ones that are a third apart and the ones that are more than a third apart. Does that make sense? I can see no. some. Okay. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me write this. Um, okay. Let's go down here. So if we go A, B, C, E, F, G, A, B, D, E, F, G. Oh, hang on, we want that on one line. Okay, so uh, looking at that last chord, um, so we have an E, so we would go E. We have a C, C. We have a B, B. We have a G, G. So when you look at that, there's a third between each note. Can you see that? So if there was a fourth, mm -hmm. that's what it would look like if it was B to E. Now let's clear, uh, hang on. If you, if it was written a different way or if you put them in in a different order, you might go, we've got a G, we've got a B, we've got a C and we've got an E. So now you can see that there's two notes there that are, that are adjacent to each other. That's a good indication that this is probably a seventh chord. Does that make sense? If you've got B and C, there's a mm. good chance that we're talking about a seventh chord. And so the C will be the root because C to B is a seventh. B to C is a second, right? So that's not gonna be the chord. B to uh, C to B is seven notes. Okay, if we, if we drew it another way, if we, uh, what do we got? Uh, we got G. We've got E, we've got C, and we've got B. So again, we see two notes next to each other, and the C, E, G, we know that's a C chord. So that's gonna tell us that C7. we've got a seventh chord here. So if when you're drawing something out like this, you put one there and you put one there, you can see that's a third because there's one in the middle. But if, oops, if you do this, that's a fourth. So that tells you that the chord is going to be in one inversion or another. So if you, let's get rid of, let's forget about what I've written in the music, but let's just write out some chords this way. So if you have this, you can see that there's a third between each one 
So it's just a D chord. But if it was this, sorry, my lines aren't very straight. Um, so you can see that we've got a third between F and A, but now there's a fourth between A and D. So effectively, we're going to take F up to here. And if there was an A on the end, it would go there. And that tells us that we've got a D chord. So you need to put it together so that it makes the chord in the, in the root position so that we get what the root note is. That's the important part about working out what chord's what, is finding out which note is the root of this chord. That seems to make an assumption that it's always going to be one, three, five. It isn't always going to be one, three, five. Um, but it will be commonly, there'll be one, three, five in the chord. Um, so especially in barbershop, you'll see one, three, five. I don't know. So the chord, the last chord you wrote on the stave was a C7 chord. Is that right? Correct. That's what it's called? Yes. C7. Okay. C7. Because C is a root, C, E, G, B. And because we've got a third between every, every, um, gap between each note, um, we know that the root has to be C. Mm. Is this making sense? A bit more now, yeah. Trying to remember. <laughs> Let's just say that your recording is going to be really uh, important. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, let's do some more chords then. The sooner you get that recording out, the better. <laughs> yeah, the recording will be out probably tomorrow morning. Um, okay, let's do another chord. Let us do... Okay, what chord is that? So let's draw it out. Um, so the bottom note is G. Whoops. G. The second note is F. 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 The lead note is D. D. And the tenor note is C. D. A. Count it up. We've got a ledger line. B. B is correct. B. B, you said? It is yeah. B. Yeah, that's a B in the tenor note. The, the purpley coloured note is a B. Okay, so we've got G, B, D, F. So what chord would that be? G7. G7 is correct. Okay, let's do another one. Um, let's go. But Peter, if, if that was a G7 chord, <clears throat> does that mean that G is the root of that chord? Yes. In this and case, G is the root. Yes. And therefore, does that mean that that would be in the key? If G is the root of that chord, does that mean that that chord has to be written in G major? In which case we're going to have at least one sharp, probably one sharp. Is that right? No. So... Um, this chord could be written in any key. So you could have a G7 chord in A sharp minor. You could have a G7 chord in C major. You could have a G7 chord in A minor. You could have a G7 chord in B flat major. Okay, I get the idea, um, but... Yeah, so, so that, don't mix up bit, the chord and the key. Bit hasn't, that bit hasn't dropped yet then, but, okay, you're saying that you can have a G7 chord in the key of C. Yes. And what, so if we're in the key of C and you have a G7 chord, what number in the key is this? In the key of C, what number is the G7 chord? Well, G is five in the key of C. Correct. So it's the fifth. And so this is probably the second most common chord we're going to see. If we're in C major, we're going to see lots of C major chords and we're going to see lots of G or G7 chords because one and five are the two most common chords that we're going to deal with. You've heard about the barbershop seventh chord? Mm. Yeah. What that means is five, seven. So the barbershop seventh in C major is G seven. 
So we're going to see a lot of this chord if we're singing in the key of G major. Make sense? No. Yeah, okay. Not for me. So <laughs> the, you said in the key of G major, but we're in the key of C here. But change something. I, did I say the key of G major? We're in the key of C major, and we're going to see lots of G seven chords in the key of C major. Right. Because the barbershop seventh in the key of C is G seven. So you go up five from the key, make it a seventh chord. That's our second most common chord. In fact, it may even, in some arrangements, it may even be the most common chord. Mm -hmm. So you may see more G sevens in the key of C major than you will actually see of, of C major chords. Okay, let's look at another chord. Okay, what chord have we got here? Let's draw it out. So we have A, oh, you tell me. So the bass note is A. What's the barry note? C. And the lead note? F. And the tenor note? E. e. Yeah. Okay, so when we look at that pattern, what do we think? Very first thing, what's the very first thing we're going to think? F and G are together. Uh, F and E are e. together. Yeah. Uh, so, it's like... <laughs> so it's going to be what? So it's like an F major. F7. F7. F7 is correct. So F is the root in this case which happens to be in the lead part this time. Mm -hmm. F is the root, so it's FAC, which is the basic chord. And then we've got the, the seventh on the E. So okay. Seven. Mm -hmm. Let's do another one. Um, so actually before we do another one, so what number in the chord is this one? In the key of C major, what is F? C. Fourth. Fourth. The fourth. So that's another common chord that you'll see. The fourth of the chord. So in simple music, not barbershop, but simple music, like a you know, a country and western or whatever, the three chords that you will see over and over again is one, four, and five. So they're the most common chords that you will see in any pretty much any type of music. In barbershop we get more weird chords. Um, but one, four, and five are still going to be the, the common chords that you see in barbershop. So this is four, seven in the key of C major. Let's do another one. Um, Hang on, I didn't do that right. Uh, there we go. Okay, what have we got there? So I want you to work this one out for yourself now. Let's see if we can uh, do it without me scribbling on the little A, B, C, D, E. C, B, E. Say that again. F B B E. No. A seventh. No. G B D is G seven. B B D E. E seven is correct. So it's E, which is in the tenor part. G, which is in the lead part. B is in the bass part and D is in the barry. 
E, G, B, D. So this is an E7 chord. Okay. It started from the top, E, G, B, D, was it? E, G, B, D is the chord. That's not the order that it's in. No, no, no. So it's E, G, D, B, oh. if you're going top down. That's what I meant. All right, down the wrong line. Okay. Let's do another one. Okay, what's that one? Um. Is it? Uh, well, I so. mm -hmm. Not quite. It's on that line. Just a D. F. Oh. D major chord? No, it's not D. What was that, Sandy? D major. D major chord? Is it an E major chord? Is there even an E in that D. chord? D, I said. D. Yeah. Oh, D. D. D major is correct. Yeah. You're right. So this is a basic D major chord. The D is doubled. We have the D in the tenor and the D in the barry. Mm -hmm. And then we have the F in the bass and the A in the lead. It's a DFA chord. Yeah, so this is a one that you'll see lots of. So I, I notice when a lot of you are going through it, you're actually starting from the top and reading down, it's a much better habit to start from the bottom and read up because I'm purposely mixing these up. But when you look at real music, especially barbershop music, you'll find that commonly the bass note is going to be one. And so that's going to make your job a lot easier if you start from the bass and work your way up. It's just a better habit to be in. And even if it's not barbershop music, the lowest note is often the root of the chord. Um, okay, let's do one more. Sorry, Peter, what was that last chord? Uh, D major. D for dog. Uh, so what's D in the chord, in the key of C? What number is D? Two. Two, correct. Not a very common chord. You're not gonna see many twos. It's gonna sound a bit weird. Mm. Okay, what's that one? BDFA. B major. I didn't hear the. Well, I said, so the, the bottom note's a B, is it? D. The bass and, note is a B, yep. Yeah. And we've got A, B, D, and F. So B7. Yeah, it has to be a seventh because there's a there's a seven yep. eight number there. Correct. So it's a B seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yep. B seven. Okay. So this stuff is um, obviously relatively complex at the moment. Um, 
So I think we need to spend some more time on it. We only looked at one sheet of music tonight. I was hoping to do lots, but that's okay. Um, so we're already well over time. So we probably better call it quits now. Um, so have a look at some chords during the week in any sort of music you want. And just practice working out what they are. And the critical thing to know is what's the root of the chord. That's what we need to know about. And uh, because that's all we need to work out when we're looking at a chord. We don't need to worry too much about whether it's a seventh or a ninth or a sus four or whatever. As long as we can work out what the root is, we can say it's a D chord, whether it's a D seven or a D whatever, doesn't matter too much. As long as we can say with confidence, this is a D chord or this is an F chord or whatever, then that's 90% of, of all that we, that we need to do as far as being able to sing barbershop. So have a look at some chords and keep your music because we'll go through that next week now. And um, we probably will need to spend at least another week on this just so that everybody really gets this chord thing because I think it's really important to know before we go on to the next thing. Any questions from tonight? Yeah, thousands, but not just now. <laughs> okay. All right, let's leave it at that. I will upload the um, the video in the morning. And Thanks, Peter. I'll send you an email as usual. Thanks, Peter. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. See you Thank next you, time. Peter. Bye. 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 <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs>